In the last handful of years, mid-sized trucks have been kind of left to wither on the vine by manufacturers. They've seen all sorts of redesigns for the half-ton truck segment and even the Super Duty Heavy Duty truck segment, and we've seen the new trucks come out in the compact segment with things like the Ford Maverick and the Hyundai Santa Cruz. But we're finally seeing a resurgence of people paying attention to the mid-size market and redoing and updating all of their trucks. This is Out Motorsports. My name is Jake, and this is the 2023 Chevy Colorado. All right, so what did Chevy do with the 2023 Colorado? Well, they simplified. So this is the only cab and bed configuration that you can get for 2023. They're only doing this crew cab with the five foot bed. That is your only option. I know people claim they would buy the other, you know, bed configurations and all that, but the reality is they probably don't sell enough to justify being built. So that means every Colorado rides on the same 131.4 inch wheelbase, and you've got five different trim levels to pick from. This one that you see here is the Trail Boss, which is kind of a ZR2 light but you've also got the base work truck. You've got the LT, which is kind of the every person's truck. You've got the slightly more luxurious, but still off-road capable Z71. You've got this Trail Boss, and then the ZR2 is coming in the next few months. And that is of course gonna be the most off-road focused of all of them. So the one thing that Chevy did that's not a one size fits all solution is with their engine. And I've got my phone out because I can't keep track of numbers. It's been a long day, but every engine that you'll get in a 2023 Colorado is the same 2.7 liter displacement turbocharged four cylinder. That's all they're doing, but it's actually two different engines. If you get the base truck, which is either the work truck or the LT, you're gonna get a physically different engine that's missing a couple things. They did it for the sake of lower power output, lower torque output, and a little bit more value uh, for the sake of the price of the truck. That one's gonna make 237 horsepower and 259 pound-feet of torque, which is totally fine in its own right. I drove a work truck. It is plenty peppy. It is plenty quick for a lot of people's uses. If you step up to the Z71 or the Trail Boss, you can get this mid-tier, which they're calling the Turbo Plus. It is also a 2.7 Turbo 4, but it is the same 2.7 Turbo 4 that's been in Silverado since about 2018. And in this iteration, it makes 310 horsepower and 390 pound-feet of torque. And this engine is also optional on the work truck and LT. If you move up to the ZR2, you're gonna get this same engine with a higher state of tune on it that they call the turbo high output. It's the same 310 horsepower, but it is 430 pound-feet of torque. So it's another 40 pound-feet. And the nice thing is Chevrolet has confirmed that if you want that high output spec, on your Trail Boss or your Z71 or whatever you get with this engine in it, you can go to the dealer and pay them and they'll flash it and it works. Like I said, with the engines being physically a little bit different, the transmissions are also different between the base engine and the Turbo Plus and the Turbo High output. The top two engine tiers get a transmission that's basically rated for a higher torque output versus the one on the base model trucks. So those are kind of the basic uh, drivetrain things going on. Let's also talk about payload and towing because that is of course very important. And a lot of people would like to do more with a midsize truck. And finally, we're seeing some numbers that uh, let you do it. So first up, payload. That is what you can haul in the bed, what you can have in the cab as far as people and stuff, and your tongue weight if you are towing a trailer. The maximum payload of the Trail Boss and the Z71 is 1,584 pounds. You can get a little bit more, you can get into the 1,600 pound range, about 1,650, 1,680 with the more basic work truck and LT. Now, of course, with any truck, you wanna check the door jam sticker itself on the specific vehicle you wanna buy and not just go by a blanket statement. The payload of this particular uh, Trail Boss is 1,500 pounds exactly. Now, towing wise, it's a little more of a blanket statement thing. Again, nice and easy. If you have the base engine, that base 2.7, you're rated at 3,500 pounds. That is again, only on the work truck and the LT. You can get the turbo plus engine, which this truck has, or the high output. And in either case, those are rated for 7,700 pounds, which is really quite a lot of weight. It's actually the best in the segment at this point. So really excited to get one of these back on my home turf and put my enclosed trailer behind it because between the weight ratings and the wheelbase, I think this has the potential to be a pretty decent tow vehicle. And with all that, we're here in beautiful San Diego, California. So let's get behind the wheel and talk about how this Colorado drives both on the street and on a light off-road course. All right, so let's talk about driving this 2023 Colorado. We've got our buddy Tedward here for the day. We've been drive partners and having a lot of laughs among other uh, things sharing some gossip and spilling tea. <laughs> but uh, we are- bitches better look out. 
Also, you better like and comment and subscribe and all that too. Um, so he took me to this great road. So all of the on-road stuff, we've done a lot of highway driving, but um, we're gonna be driving in a very untruck-like manner, especially given this is the trail boss with uh, all terrains and like soft shocks and all that. But anyway, um, driving this thing, this is a huge improvement over a lot of older mid-sized trucks. This is a really nice step forward for GM and for the segment in general. Power-wise, I think this makes plenty. Like I said, this is that mid-plus uh, engine. I don't think it needs any more. <laughs> I would kill for some better um, better seats. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hi, Jake. Hi. <laughs> Brakes. <laughs> Brakes are good. Yeah, good initial are. bite. Um, progressive pedal, like very, you know, capable brakes. I'm not really concerned about those. Um, steering is kind of slow. I know you were talking about that too. Like it's fine. It's fine for a truck. Like it's like, it's not fair to harp on it. Yeah. Because mid-sized truck, like what do you want to do? Yeah. But at the same time, like you, it's a little stressful sometimes because like, you know, you just, you feel like, you know, hey, I don't want to go off a cliff because I wasn't steering fast enough. <laughs> right. It's definitely like an arm over arm sort of deal to, to do a tighter turn. Suspension wise, I think we're on the same page about this. So this has a slightly softer suspension than the Z71, which is a little softer than like the LT and the work truck. We both like soft trucks. Yeah, I'm into a soft truck. And even for stuff like this, it's just kind of fun. It's like a soft race car. It's just like a golden retriever that wants to like roll over and please you and like let you rub its belly a little. Yeah, I mean the vehicle isn't like eager, right? Like no. we're doing this and it's like, ugh. It's not happy about it, this. It's a lot, you know, it's definitely not set out to do by any standards. It will do it, and it will do it in a fairly neutral manner. But we're coercing it into something that it's barely consenting to. Yeah, well, like, it's it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Um, yeah, it's, it's okay. The other interesting thing here with, like, doing this dumb handling series of maneuvers, this is, like, fairly neutral, and it's easy to make it rotate. Um, you can kind of break and, like, Based on your throttle modulation, it will tuck the nose in and it doesn't want to understeer really. Um, yeah, it's all fine. We're on Goodyear all terrains. Highway tire comes on all the non Trail Boss and ZR2 stuff. But uh, I don't know. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, she's soft. <laughs> A lot of noise. These tires are not happy. Um, I'm, I would love to have tire temps on this and just watch them escalate immediately. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're doing very silly things here. I think overall comfort though is good. Like, I mean, highway comfort's good. Um, it's relatively quiet. If you, if you don't get the base engine, you get a little more like sound insulation on different parts of the engine that keep engine noise down a bit, which I think we both kind of have enjoyed. Um, I wouldn't say this was fatiguing to spend all day in. No, I think it's a fine truck to use on a regular basis. Like, and I never felt like bummed to get back in it. We've been in it all yeah. day. Yeah, we've been eight hours and this has been good. So um, to that end, seat comfort, I know you mentioned you wanted bolsters, but other than that. Oh, they're comfortable seats, <laughs> don't get me wrong. This is a comfortable seat. It's, it, it, it's supportive enough for a pickup truck. I just, you know, it would be nice to have a little bit of lateral support. Yeah, 100%. Like I said, power and torque I think is fine. This thing scoots really well. Um, talking about seats though, other than you wanting bolstering for canyon carving in your Colorado pickup truck, um, <laughs> how do you, I'm sorry. yeah, we, we all do. How do you think for like seat comfort? I think these are really comfortable. I, I have no like pain. I'm not like irritated by them. I think they are, I think it is a really good seat. Um, I, you know, and I think if I know in the work truck, it's a $550 option for like the, the for lumbar seats. Oh, for electric for seats electric in general, and, yeah. Electric and lumbar. Um, I, I would not forego that. That is... Yeah, that's like a worthwhile... But keep in mind, that's only going to be for the driver. My seat does not have this. Yeah. So I don't have lumbar support adjustments on my seat. This is very more, like very much manual on this side. And they're not the only ones in the game, so don't be like, oh, shit, we should be cheap. Like Honda does the same thing. Yeah, a lot of people do it, but... Um, these are the cloth seats. These are not heated. They're they're pretty basic. The Z71 has like a leatherette, I guess, which is heated and ventilated, which is nice. I don't think one is more comfortable than the other. Yeah, I almost like didn't notice a difference. Yeah, um, I, but I think overall, 
We both have longer legs, and I think these have good like thigh support, which is nice. So yeah, I've been, I've been comfortable other than like the canyon carving and lack of bolstering. Here's something funny that I don't think we've gone through yet, but someone pointed this out. There's no headlight control in this truck. Oh. There's no physical headlight control. It's just the headlights are in here. In the screen. Or actually there's a little light icon. Oh. That's your headlight control. No, thank you. Why did we need to do that? No, thank you. I'm sorry. I, like, I, I, I am a fan of a lot of things about this truck. That is the stupidest decision, and I, I don't understand it. it's dangerous because lights, mirrors, things like that need to be incredibly accessible because those are need-based. Those are things yes. that you need when you need them, and I do not want a menu. Why are we a switch. tip-tapping around? Yeah. To be fair, the little light icon is always visible, but, like, why did we... Why? What does that add? It's not helpful. No. It reduced cost by being like, well, guess what? We're not going to make this button. Right. You know? Yeah, and I know they're trying to like keep costs minimal and all that. Um, I don't think I would have skimped on the headlight switch. Yeah, but, thank you, man. Um, interesting thing that I think we do like collectively is the infotainment screen is uh, the same size for all trims. Even the work truck gets the same 11 point whatever inch screen. Uh, and your gauge cluster screen is either like an 8 or 11 inch setup as well. So um, I think they use the screens pretty well. Like the information's presented nicely. Yeah. Um, a lot of companies tend to not make the best use of all the pixels, so then why bother? There are no physical buttons on it um, other than the power and the volume knob, so you are at the mercy of the touchscreen for all of your menu options. Yeah, that's a good point. You do have physical climate controls no matter which trim level you get, which is a very good thing. Another thing that I think is I, I keep forgetting I'm in a pickup truck. It just feels like an SUV. Yeah, like, it really does. The ride is it doesn't good. Doesn't have like that miserable like body on frame nightmare feel. Like it really does feel like I'm in sort of like you know not quite to the point where I'm like I'm in a unibody, but like it's got a vibe like that. It's tuned well. The suspension tuning is good. You don't feel like you're in some uncontrollable thing when you do want to just go hammer it like a jerk. Right, and you're not giving up off road capability from this how it seems. Um, we'll go off roading next and, and lightly and see how that goes, but. You know, it's it's a real truck, but it just drives so much more modern than all these outgoing mid-sized trucks do. With all that, let's go off-roading. How's that sound? I am excited. Let's do it. All right, so let's talk off-roading now. So we are in a Trail Boss, which uh, Colorado Trail Boss could certainly be a new drag name. So uh, welcome to the stage, Colorado Trail Boss. Uh, anyway. We took the Z71 up and now we're in the Trail Boss going down. So this is uh, a few inches wider than the Z71, which uh, on this trail doesn't really matter. It's pretty wide. On the trails back closer to where I live, that would absolutely matter. So that's something to think about. But um, this is, I think, doing pretty well. We've had a good enough time so far and they're encouraging us to drive at somewhat high speeds. Yeah, I'm uh, pretty shocked at like, because, you know, usually you're off-roading and you're just crawling and whatever. Yeah. And it's like... We keep losing people while we're like basically ejected from the seats regularly. Uh, this one doesn't have the cameras that were in the Z71. So the Z71 had the two underbody cameras that they offer, which makes like a total of 10 cameras you can have on this thing. And uh, that is really cool because it shows on your infotainment all of your, uh, your views for rocks you're going to run over and you can see the drive shaft spinning, which is super cute. So that is, uh, that's pretty cool. We have downhill assist control. Good here. luck. <laughs> okay, so. Okay. Hill descent. Hill descent. That's I got what they you. call it. Yes. So, uh, one problem with putting commonly used controls in touch screens in trucks when you're doing something like this is that uh, you're bouncing around a lot and good luck hitting the actual button. But uh, now I'm doing hill descent control set to four miles an hour and uh, got a front facing camera on this one. So there's still some cameras. This is just, this is making this all pretty easy which is the point of a truck like this, and especially a trim like this. I think we should have started in a Chevy Lumina and then worked our way up to the Colorado. Yeah. So that way we could see just how impressive this is. Yeah, I mean, if you haven't off-roaded in a 95 Lumina, like have you even lived? As far as articulation and stuff, like I'm not an off-roader. I know they, they did some things with approach and break over and departure and, and this truck in particular sits higher than the Z71 by an extra inch. Uh, and then the ZR2, which we're not driving today, will sit another inch higher than that, which is three inches taller than the base work truck and LT. So this is two inches taller. That's uh, ZR2 is gonna be three. All of the trucks we're dealing with here have the G80 
uh, automatic locking rear, so no buttons in here. The ZR2 will have the button actuated uh, locking front and rear diffs, which those are fun, um, but you don't really need them in most cases for most off-roading. Oh, as much as we're getting thrown around, look, I think the ride is pretty decent. It is, and the truck doesn't care. Like, yeah. the thing is, I'm getting thrown around, but like- We're there's, being princesses. There's, like, yeah, for sure. But there's not a moment where I'm like, we're getting thrown around and like, oh, you're gonna rip the bumper off. Like, trust me, I've played that game in Land Rovers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're doing just fine. And, and speaking of ripping things off, um, they did say that they made the front uh, arrow lip on the front bumper easier to remove versus the outgoing model. So that's uh, that's good if you need that for some extra ground clearance and or uh, approach angle. Oh, we have we've arrived. Oh, that's the obstacle. So so the obstacle, capital T, capital O, <laughs> is the one really difficult thing on this trail, and it is basically just a big articulation challenge that shows off angles. It shows off the G80 diff. And I know it's just straight through. This looks so gnarly. And boop. And boop. And pivot. <laughs> That's so fun. That's wild. That wasn't really hard for this. Obviously, no, they like, know you can get it, through it. But it, like, does not care. No. Just so easy. Love it. And that is it for this review of the 2023 Chevy Colorado. Thank you so much for coming along. As always, be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe right here on YouTube. Give us a follow on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Out Motorsports. And if you'd like to join an ever-growing community of LGBT automotive enthusiasts, we would love to have you at OutMotorsports.com. We've got a whole online community there, and we're hosting some events in person this year, both on the street and on the racetrack. Till next time, please stay safe, be well, see you again soon.